Welcome everyone from a very warm and sunny Washington, D.C. This is Rick Rosenberg from the Office of English Language Programs at the U.S. Department of State. And I'm very happy to welcome you to this, our last webinar of the fifth Shaping the Way We Teach English webinar course. Don't worry though, this is the last webinar of the fifth series. The sixth series is just around the corner, beginning on April 18th. We will provide more information about how to sign up for the next series at the end of the webinar. Right now, I'd like to introduce you to our very special guest for today, Megan Curtis. Ms. Megan Curtis serves as the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Academic Programs at the U.S. Department of State's Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs, where she oversees all academic programs sponsored by the department, including the Fulbright Program, Teacher Exchange Programs, and all English language programs. Previously, Ms. Curtis served as Senior Advisor in the Office of the Counselor and Chief of Staff at the Department of State, where she advised the Secretary of State Clinton on international development policies and strategies. Ms. Curtis holds a Master's Degree in Public Administration from Princeton University and a Bachelor's Degree in Urban Planning from Vassar, Vassar College. No further ado. Thank you, Rick. I am delighted to take part in the Shaping the Way We Teach English webinar, a webinar that I have heard so much about over the last year. And I'd like to say welcome to all of you. The focus today is on English Teaching Forum. Forum is the flagship publication of the Office of English Language Program in the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs here at the State Department. Over 85,000 copies of each issue of Forum are distributed in more than 130 countries worldwide. Very few publications bring together ideas from an audience as diverse and widespread as Forum has. It is truly a forum for the exchange of ideas and experiences shared by English teachers from around the world. It also fosters a shared understanding of American culture. As you know, this year's forum is celebrating 50 years. This is its 50th anniversary. We believe that one reason forum has remained popular and relevant for such a long time is that forum is a journal written by English teachers for English teachers. We also believe that forum builds respect for the English teaching profession. That is your profession. Here's a story to show you what I mean. This is a story told by Richard Bot William, a retired regional English language officer whom some of you may know. Richard says, I have heard people say, I'm just an English teacher. He says, once I heard that and I had a copy of Forum Handy, I opened it up and showed a couple of great articles written by just English teachers and pointed out that these authors were having an impact on tens of thousands of English teachers around the world who were helping students master a skill that would better their lives. Is that the work of just an English teacher? As Richard's story shows, Forum helps remind English teachers how important your work is. Forum brings you all together. And Forum is used in many ways. Of course, English teachers read Forum to find ideas that they can use in their classrooms. But Forum is also used in teacher training workshops, like this one in South Africa, in some countries, at some schools, teachers schedule regular networking meetings and base their meetings on forum articles. In Mexico City, teachers hold regular roundtable discussions at for uh, forum articles as one way to mark the anniversary. This year, events are being held worldwide to celebrate forum's 50th anniversary. One such event was held recently in Jakarta, Indonesia, with a workshop focusing on writing articles for forum. They even had an English Teaching Forum anniversary cake. As you can see, Forum is a valuable tool that is used in teacher training and for, for professional development of teachers around the world. We invite you to make Forum a part of your in-service meetings or to start holding meetings based on Forum if you don't already do so. We also hope that you have Forum handy in your library or at your desk every day. Once again, I'm delighted to be a part of this special webinar. Enjoy the rest of the webinar, and please keep reading Forum.
Thank you, Megan. Um, let me introduce our other presenters today. Um, as you see from the photo, we have four presenters. Um, starting on the left, we have Max Kohler, who are, is our one and only editor-in-chief of English Teaching Forum magazine since 2003. She first used Forum when she was a Peace Corps volunteer teaching English at the University of Waukesha, Mauritania, more than 20 years ago. On your far right, you see the assistant editor, Tom Glass, who has been an editor at English Teaching Forum magazine for the past three years. He got to know Forum as a Peace Corps volunteer in Thailand, and he remembers that his teaching colleague, colleagues were always asking, when are we going to get that next issue of Forum magazine? Our other two presenters there on the left is, is Heather Benucci and Jenny Hodson, as, we all, as you all know, um, our materials writer, writers and editors in the Office of English Language Programs, and our contributing writers to Forum. When Jenny was an English language fellow, she enjoyed distributing copies of Forum to English teachers in Togo. Heather loves using the beautiful forum photos and class activities. Her favorite forum theme was winter sports. With no further ado, our editor of Forum Magazine. Hello, everyone. This is Max, and I'm very pleased to be with you today. And I'm happy that you are joining us in our celebration of English Teaching Forum's 50th anniversary. To begin, I just want to show you a few things that we'll be talking about in this webinar. A look back, we'll talk about the history of Forum, very briefly, not for 50 years worth. What's inside, take a look at the contents. Accessing Forum, that is finding articles and resources and using our website making the feature article work for you, classroom activities and the lighter side, and finally, submitting an article to Forum. So that's what we'll cover today. Now you just heard that I was introduced to Forum more than 20 years ago. Now we'd like to take a poll to find out when all of you first encountered Forum. And Jenny had the poll up on the screen right now. Please enter your responses. When did you first read English Teaching Forum? Okay, I'm seeing some of your responses up there. Looks like a large number of people started reading one to five years ago. Let's see what other numbers we get up here. There's a tie the last two categories. Okay, I think the movement has stopped. It looks like those are our responses. Curiously, no one was here 50 years ago reading Forum. So that's why we'll take a little stroll down memory lane here. Thank you, Jenny, for putting up the poll. And now we'll look at the history of Forum. Here's what the cover looked like when the first issue of Forum was published in March of 1963. I think our current cover is a little bit flashier. I know some of you have already commented on the gold color. Three years later, Forum included phonograph records for the first time. In this issue, readers could listen to poems and songs. Records like these were included at various times until the technology changed and teachers no longer used record players. And here we are now using digital recordings and holding webinars. So you see how much the technology has changed and yet we're still printing for them. nineteen seventy two. This puzzle celebrates Forum's tenth anniversary. Did you notice what it says in the top row of words? You see that? English Teaching Forum. Nineteen seventy six. 
forum unveils a new nameplate. The text is pretty small, but can any of you read what it says inside the letter O of forum? Some people are saying yes in the chat box. Some people are saying no. So I'll tell you what it says. English Teaching Forum, a journal for the teacher of English outside the United States. So they crammed all of that into the letter O. Nineteen seventy six was also the year that the lighter side first appeared in forum. Here we have a series of riddles. Where can readers find the lighter side in current issues of forum? Do you know that? Those of you who are reading forum regularly, where do you find the lighter side? The lighter side is amazing, good. I always look for it on the back cover. That is correct, Kelly. It's on the inside back cover at each issue of forum. We'll talk a little bit more about the lighter side later in the webinar. And here's the 25th anniversary edition of forum. Very colorful cover. It's hard to believe that 25 years have already passed since this issue came out. Nineteen ninety four was an important year for English teaching forum. That's the year that forum went online. And in fact, Rick had a lot to do with that. He was working in the office here then. On the website, you can find articles from nineteen ninety three to the present. And Heather will talk a little bit more about that later and show you how to search the archives. Here's another new nameplate for forum. How many of you remember this one? I'm sure some of you read this one. This is the nameplate that was in use when I became editor. I see a question in the chat box, is forum available online? Yes, it is. And again, we'll talk about that more later. In 2001, Forum featured an interview with Diane Larson Freeman. The next issue of Forum, volume 50, number 2, which is being printed right now, contains an article written by an, Diane Larson Freeman to celebrate our 50th anniversary. So that will be coming out in the next issue, and you have that to look forward to. 2006, another new nameplate. And this one, you'll notice, says English teaching right up on the top. And we wanted to emphasize that because that's what Forum is all about. Here is a special issue of Forum on teaching young learners. And you can find it on the website. And for those of you who teach young learners, it will be a valuable resource. And some of you might want to even use it to teach your own children English. It's got a lot of pictures in it, too. So it's popular with children. And here's something for teachers. It's an entire special issue of lesson plans. So if you have not already seen this one, you will want to look for it online and get some ideas for your classroom. Now here are the numbers that show the wide reach of English Teaching Forum over the past 50 years. Forum has published more than 3,060 articles by approximately 2,750 authors. Some of them published more than one article, obviously. And those articles came from 139 countries. And that brings us back to the present. And I will turn this over now to Heather. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Max. I'm happy to be here with you all today. 
So now that we know so much more about how Forum has changed over the years, let's take a look at the contents of current issues. So what we see here is a table of contents from a recent issue of the print version of Forum. And each issue is going to have a standard group of sections. What you'll find at the very front of Forum is going to be three or four articles written by teachers around the world. For instance, the articles you see listed here were written by teachers working in Turkey, the US, Japan, and Chile. And these main articles focus on professional development topics, classroom tips, and current trends in English teaching. So as I mentioned, these teachers are written by, or excuse me, these articles are written by teachers, and we encourage all of you to consider submitting an article to Forum. And Tom will have some great tips to help you out with that later today in the webinar. The next three sections are all featured in today's webinar. First, we have the feature article, which is going to provide background knowledge and set the scene for the issue's theme. Then we have classroom activities. This section provides ready-to-use teaching ideas for all different types of learner levels, and the activities are also related to the theme. In this case, these are going to be gardening-related activities. And finally, we have the lighter side, which Max had just mentioned, which are games and puzzles that you can find on the inside back cover of the print version. Now, before we start exploring the forum contents in depth, I'd like to ask you all a few questions using some polls. And thank you, Jenny, for getting these set up. All right, so first on the top, if you're currently a forum reader, and I hope you all are, how do you access forum? Online, in print, or both versions? Just click on your button to share your vote. And the second question, you can see below that one is how do you describe your access to the internet? Uh, maybe you're really lucky and you have regular internet access in your classroom, or perhaps your access is a bit more infrequent. Please share your information about internet access and how you like to get to forum. Oh, it's good to see that uh, the print version still has a strong following and that many people are now accessing both the print and online version. And it looks like this group has great internet access overall, at least every day um, has the ability to access the internet, so um, that's good. And there are some that have infrequent or no internet access. Okay, great, thank you for sharing those pieces of information with us all. So as we just discussed in that first poll item, there are two ways to get to Forum, the print subscriptions and the online version. So what you see here is the Forum website, and the web address is listed there at the top for you, forum.state.gov. And you can also get to the Forum website through the main English language program site, which you see on the bottom left-hand side, or the new American English portal uh, and that address is listed for you on the bottom right there, AmericanEnglish.state.gov. And before we explore the website, I'd like you all to keep in mind that you don't have to have internet in your classroom to make great use of Forum. I think you can still view and print resources even if you only have limited access perhaps uh, at work or you can get to it from home as well. So let's take a look at some of the important pieces of, of information on the forum website. So when we looked at the table of contents a few moments ago, I mentioned that each issue begins with three to four articles by teachers. So if you want to share your success in the classroom or perhaps some action research you've been doing, you can use the link shown here both in the center or on the tab there to learn how to submit an article to forum. And again, you're going to get some great tips from Tom on that process in just a little bit. And speaking of the print version, if you require some more information about how to subscribe to the print version of Forum, you can use the link shown here. And if you need to get in touch with the Forum team here in Washington, D.C., 
As you can see, there's several spots on the main forum website that will help you to contact us via email. Finally, perhaps the most exciting thing, in my opinion, on the main website is a link to Forum's Facebook page. So if you'd like to connect with other teachers about current topics, just follow the link that you see here. And that link will take you to the Facebook site. Uh, this is the wall of the Facebook page for Forum. And as you can see, there are several recent discussions uh, from teachers around the world. And we have over 17,000 likes. So this is a really big, dynamic community of English language teachers. We really encourage you all to visit the site, to join in the conversations that are taking place every day, and to like us on Facebook. All right, so now you know your way around the main forum website. Now you probably want to know how to access all of the great articles and features, right? So there's three main ways to do this. The first option is to browse recent issues, which can be accessed on the upper right side of the page. You can see the picture there of the cover of the gardening issue. And if you click onto the cover or the link right below, you're going to be taken to the electronic table of contents which looks like this. So this is the electronic version of the table of contents that we looked at just a few moments ago. And you can see there's links that will take you directly to the articles and classroom activities. All right. Next, if you're looking for a specific article and you know when it was written, you have the option to browse forum by year. So you would use the drop down menu on the right hand side there select the year that you want, so in this case maybe 2002, and then click Go, and that will take you to the table of contents as well. And the last option for finding information is probably one that you all have used before when searching the internet, and that is keyword searches or topic searches. And you can see that is in the center of the right-hand side of the page. So if you are coming to Forum Online, what topics or keywords might you search for? Please share your ideas in the chat box. What are some topics that might be of interest to you as a teacher? Ooh, Jennifer says classroom management. That's a great idea. ESP, communicative activities. task-based learning and methods. A hint has brought up a very popular topic, using technology in the classroom. And you can also, as Jerusa mentions, look for information or activities related to specific language skills, such as reading. So, as you can imagine, Pretty much anything you'd want to uh, search for to improve your classroom experience for your students or your own classroom management, as many people have said, um, you can use keyword searches for. So for today's purposes, I am getting ready to teach a class on Earth Day next month. Is anyone else out there going to focus a lesson on Earth Day? For my Earth Day class, I'd like to know a little bit more about gardening, and I'd like to see if Forum has any articles or activities related to this subject. So I'll type in my keyword there in the box, gardening, hit search, and lucky for me, there was an entire issue back in 2011, volume 49, that featured gardening as a theme. So there should be lots of resources related to my topic of interest, gardening. So let's spend a little time exploring this issue. All right, so as we learned from the table of contents, after those methodology and classroom practices articles that are at the very beginning part of Forum, you're going to find a feature article. And this article will set the scene for the classroom activities as well as the lighter side. One thing I love about the feature article is that each one starts out with a beautiful two-page photograph like the one you see here. It's really pretty, right? And based on the size here, again, it's a two-page widespread, 
The photo is big enough for teachers to hold up and display for small and medium sized classes. So no special equipment needed, no projector, uh, no copying. Might be a little trickier in larger classes, um, but again, a, an instant made resource for you here at the very beginning of the feature article. So if everyone takes a look at this picture, what do you think might be some of the topics that are discussed in this feature article? Go ahead and share any guesses you might have in the chat box. What might this article discuss? Well, Jennifer says how to plant flowers. I think that's a great guess. Diversity, interesting idea. Eco-friendly gardens. Ooh, good guess, Basma. Any other guesses out there? How to take care of plants? Different types of plants? Yes, I agree. This is a great picture. It's beautiful. And protecting the environment and being green. Well, you guys are on the right track, and some of you came up with the topics just by looking at the picture, which is great. The four main topics in this feature article are about growing our own food, urban or city gardening, and as I think it was Bosma said, uh, eco-friendly gardening or environmentally friendly gardening, so being green. And there is a special spotlight on the presidential garden here in the U.S., the White House Garden. So, as we discussed, the feature article is really designed to provide background knowledge. Uh, that's linked to the issue's theme. And the feature article has four main parts. The written text itself, the photos, like the ones we just looked at, a glossary list, and web resources. And these pieces of information can supply really useful cultural background knowledge for teachers. Say, for example, based on where you live and your interests, you might not know that much about American football. I know I find it really confusing. The uh, feature article can supply details about the rules, the customs, and the practices associated with the sport, and then that information could then be used to prepare to teach with the classroom activity section. So a lot of great information for you. And at this point, I think it's important to say that many readers are tempted to skip the feature article, because what comes right after the feature article? The classroom activities. And these are really exciting because they're beautifully packaged and ready to use in your class. However, in addition to the reasons listed here already, I think the feature article is really worth exploring because you can develop your own classroom activities. And these are going to be you know, perfectly tailored for the needs of your own class. So now let's take a closer look at how we can make use of the four parts of the feature article. All right, first up, we have the text. The feature article is pretty long. It's usually about 10 pages and is geared towards more advanced learners, maybe upper intermediate at the lower end. And since this is a lot of information, it's going to be usually too much to photocopy, especially for a really big class, right? So how can we use it? How can we adapt it to our needs? I would suggest shortening the text or picking parts and pieces that support your learning objectives for the lesson. So you can use um, just small clips to create an activity. And for lower level learners, you can simplify the text by maybe summarizing a piece of it using vocabulary or grammar that's more important for, or excuse me, more relevant to your level of learners. And also just because, well, actually I'll ask you, what, uh, what language skill is a text a written text usually associated with. Reading, exactly, Magda. And just because that's usually the case, we, we don't have to be limited to that language skill. So I'm going to give you an example of an activity that I designed for my Earth Day class that uses the text. But while I'm describing this activity, what I want all of you to think about is what are the language skills that this activity uses, okay? So everybody ready to think about that? So here is my eco-friendly gardening jigsaw activity, and this is for advanced learners. And I created this using the feature article text. 
So what you see here are five clips because the article is so long, I didn't want to use the whole thing. Again, I'm adapting it for the needs of my learners. So I cut out five paragraph length clips that you can see. And you don't need to be able to read them all now. It's not important. Just know that they are about topics like chemical free gardening, uh, water conservation, green topics like many uh, people had mentioned uh, initially when we were trying to guess the content. So apart from the clips, you'll need information grids, which we'll talk about in just a moment, as well as something for students to write with. All right, now for the steps. So the first thing you need to do is break the class up into five groups. And you can do this any way you like. You can use preset groups. You can have students count off. Whatever technique works well for your classroom management situations. Next, we're going to distribute the clips from the article. And then the groups are going to read their article. And they're going to have to agree on two different things. They need to identify the environmental problem that's discussed. And then they also have to come up with um, or to identify the eco-friendly advice that is uh, provided in the clip. So to help students organize this information, they're going to use an information grid similar to what you see here on the left side of the screen. And as you can see, there is space to write down the eco problem and the associated advice for each of the clips that the, student, the groups have. And in terms of prepare, preparation, teachers can prepare a grid in advance and copy it and give it out to students. Or a way to save some time and resources, perhaps, would be to have students make their own information grids by drawing one on a blank piece of paper with the help of a model from teachers. So using the information grids, the students have their paragraph, just like the one you can see the close up of. Chemical free gardening is the topic. They'll identify the problem, the advice, and record the information in the grid. So here our problem is chemical pesticides and fertilizers are potentially bad for the environment. And the advice for this problem is try to use chemical free gardening. Uh, compost can improve soil and beneficial insects can stop pest problems. So that's the starting point for the information grid. Now for the jigsaw part. The groups are going to count off one to five like this. Next, everybody's going to stand up. Always good to have an active component, right? And they're going to move to a new station based on their numbers. So now you're going to have five mixed groups, a jigsaw of groups. And in these new groups, the students are going to work together to share all of the information that they have from their original group. So each, each person will share their first group's problem and advice. And at the end, each group will have a complete uh, summary that captures eco problems and eco advice found in the reading clips from the feature articles. So you can wrap this up several different ways. You could end it there, or the groups could then think about which piece of advice they think is the best. And the whole class could come back together and then discuss outcomes. And if you wanted to make this into a project, you could also go ahead and do some actual projects related to eco-gardening. Maybe you all have a school garden or there's a neighborhood garden. You could try out some of the pieces of advice. And I've seen a lot of questions about um, handling different situations with this uh, jigsaw activity. Depending on the size of your class, you could have you know, 10 groups instead of fives or larger groups uh, with more than five people. So you can adjust this to suit your situation. Um, and again, due to the content, this activity is more geared towards advanced learners. But if you had simpler content for reading, um, you could do this activity, I think, with any level. So my question for you all was, and some of you have provided some answers to this already in the chat box, what skills does this activity involve? Again, this is based off of originally a reading text. Ooh, community language learning. Yeah. Note taking, listening, speaking, yep. Yeah. Basically, all of the core language skills, right? Summarizing. What about thinking skills? Ooh, negotiating. That's a good one, Kelly. Yeah, I think some critical thinking skills are involved here. Students are being asked to make judgments about real life situations, so it also involves. Um, 
authentic language, language that they might encounter in real situations, right? So great, even though we started out with one written text, we've developed this activity from the feature article and forum that brings together all of these different learning skills. I'd like to share one more activity with you um, based on the text from the feature article. And this activity is more easy to adapt for all different learner levels. So, as I mentioned, there is a spotlight in this feature article on the presidential garden, the White House garden um, here in Washington, DC. So teachers have several different ways that they can share the information with their students. They can do, you know, provide the entire text, which again, we said may, sometimes that might be a bit long, the teachers can give a selection of the article or develop a level graded text. Or one more idea might be to give an oral summary of interesting pieces of information from this text that are appropriate for uh, lower level learners. So after the teachers have shared this information about the White House Garden in whatever format they think will be best for their class, the student's output could either include a written description of or a drawing and a presentation about important gardens in their own lives. So this could be a national garden, like the White House Garden, or a garden near their home or in their neighborhood. So as I see somebody saying there in the chat box, Magda, yes, this is a great chance to personalize um, some output related to the content from one of the feature articles. OK, so that was just a couple of ways to use the text, but let your imagination run wild. So next we have the pictures, a very important and perhaps even my favorite part of the feature article. So taking a look here at the pictures, how might you use them in a lesson? Ooh, eliciting, that's a great idea, Basma. How else? Prediction. Comparing things, great. Warming up the class, all kinds of vocabulary instruction. Ooh, and brainstorming, I like that idea. Mind mapping, interesting, Magda. Ooh, Pilar says eliciting information related to the topic. I think that's a great tip. to create stories, so it's a story prompt. Ooh, to guess the title of the lesson, that'd be a fun way to start. So you all have come up with several ideas that are similar to ones I developed. Um, many of you said predicting, using prompts for writing and creating interest and motivation for what's going to come next, caption writing activities, and picture dictation, um, and several, several other great ideas that you all shared. So a question for you. We did one of these tasks already in this webinar. Can anyone remember which of these picture-based tasks that we did? I showed you all a picture earlier. It was a large two-page picture, and I asked you a question. Does anyone remember what that was? Excellent, Amir, yes. It was a prediction task. I showed you the picture that introduces the feature article, and I asked you all to guess what the topics might be, which you did quite well. You guessed eco-gardening and, and uh, green gardening. Um, so, again, just an easy example of how you can create interest or use the pictures that are shown in the feature article. Next up, we have the glossary. And as you can see, there's several types of activities you can do here to highlight the vocabulary that's in the feature article. Um, and I'd really like to point out the Find Your Match networking game. Uh, Jenny is going to give an example of this type of vocabulary activity in just a few moments, so keep your eyes out for that. And the final part of the feature article is a great list of web, uh, websites and web resources. 
And we teachers can use these websites to develop our own knowledge and to find classroom materials that are going to work in our own context with our own uh, level of learners. So things that might need to be simplified text, materials for younger learners, um, or maybe things that are related to English for specific purposes, depending on the topic of the feature article. And apart from the teachers, the students themselves can use these websites with your guidance for project-based learning tasks, like the ones you see here. Web quests, scavenger hunts, ooh, and I'd like to point out that on our Ning, we have an example of a scavenger hunt. We have asked you all to find specific pieces of information by exploring the website uh, for forum. So if you haven't had a chance to do that yet, we encourage you to try to answer the scavenger hunt questions. Again, that is located on the Ning for this webinar. And before I close here, I would like to show you briefly one of the websites that is featured in this article on gardening. And this website is kidsgardening.com. As you can see, this site includes several pre-built classroom project ideas that could be great for young learners, or also for less advanced students who need simplified texts. So resources like these that have pre-built projects can save you a lot of time. In sum, please don't skip the feature article. Use its texts pictures, glossary, and web resources to create great learning activities for your students. I really want to thank you all for sharing your inputs and ideas. And up next, we're going to continue exploring the gardening issue of Forum with Jenny, who's going to talk about classroom activities and the lighter side. Thank you so much, Heather. Hello, everyone. It's so great to be with you again today. I'm going to talk to you, as Heather mentioned, about two other parts of Forum that are now in every issue, the classroom activity and the lighter side. The great thing, as Heather mentioned, is that the same topic, the feature article, classroom activities, and the lighter side are all always related to the same topic, in this case, gardening. And as we've seen, they can all be used in your classrooms. The classroom activities are short, standalone activities at the end of each issue of Forum. There are three in each issue, and they're usually targeted at different levels, so one beginner, one intermediate, and one advanced. There are also suggestions for how to adapt each activity for different levels. We've just he heard Heather talk about the feature article, and we're going to continue with gardening going through one of the classroom activities related. But first, I want to know, how many of you have used the classroom activities in Forum? So just yes or no. Oh, great. I see most of you have used them. Oh, it's evening out. It seems like about half of you have used the classroom activities. Great. So that means that we have many more people that can still make use of them. All right. Thanks for sharing. So before we get into the activity, I just want to let you know that the Forum Classroom Activities are a relatively new addition to Forum. So right now there are only five issues out there in the world that have classroom activities. Um, before 2011, between 2004 and 2010, Forum actually contained lesson plans, which were much lengthier than classroom activities and were specific to just one level. And then prior to 2004, there wasn't always a lesson plan or classroom activity in every issue, but some contained ideas, techniques, or specific activities for use. So here is one example of a classroom activity in the gardening issue entitled Growing Garden Metaphors. I'm going to go through this activity with you step by step. Now let me focus in on some of the specifics from the activity that I've just shown you that you will see in each issue. You will see the level, the approximate time required, although of course this is always adapted depending on your class, 
the language goals of the activity. So what should my students be able to do by the end of the lesson? The materials that you'll need. And then some classroom activities suggest optional materials that you could use, but don't necessarily have to have. It may also include preparation steps, if there's anything for the teacher that they need to do ahead of time. But most importantly, there are the procedures, which are step-by-step -step instructions on how to exactly execute this lesson in the classroom. So it makes it really easy for teachers to follow. OK, so now I'm going to go through one activity with you. And I will be the teacher, and I want you to imagine that you are my students. Are you ready, class? OK. Teachers are gardeners. They cannot make a flower bloom, but they can help it grow. So what I'm telling you is that all teachers are gardeners, right? Every single teacher must be a gardener. No, that's not what I'm telling you. Probably many teachers have different hobbies. So yes, are teachers really gardener? No, Nadia says they're not. You're right. Some of them might be. I am. Um, in what ways are teachers similar to gardeners? I think that's the real question that we want to ask. So maybe if we replace the word flower with what word? What word can we replace the word flower with? Students. So teachers are gardeners. They cannot make a student bloom, but they can help it grow. Great. So again, the statement, teachers are gardeners. What kind of statement is this? Does anybody know what we call this? That might be a tricky question. OK. A noun phrase? Yeah. OK. Is it a metaphor? There we go. Yes, it is a metaphor. What is a metaphor? Does any, can anybody share what a metaphor is? A metaphor means words that imply other meaning. They carry a message behind them. Great. So a metaphor is a figure of speech, and it's, it makes a comparison between two things that might not otherwise be compared. So share some other examples of metaphors that you might know in the chat box. For example, there are some famous ones. Life is a journey. You are my sunshine. And metaphors can be ones that are famous, but they're also ones that you create. So women are like flowers. You are a flower. Great. OK, so back to being teachers. Once your students understand the concept of metaphors, you can move on and begin to brainstorm some more vocabulary related to the topic. And today's topic, obviously, is gardening. OK, class, please share some other words that you know related to gardening. I see water, plant, green thumb, seed. Great, those are all good ones. Uh, roots, flowers, soil, branches, insects, and bees are ones that we'll need for today. Fertilizer, pots, trunk, good. Rain, water, sunlight, weeds, gardener, vegetables, environment. I love the green thumb one. Great. Great, so these are all words that we will be using today. Back to being teachers. As the teacher, choose one or two of the garden vocabulary words that you, your students have come up with or the ones that you decide to use, and draw this graphic organizer on the board. So here are two examples. And then with the class, come up with descriptions about the words. For example, garden brings color and happiness to people's lives, is full of life, needs care. These graphic organizers will help your students develop some ideas of what to compare a garden to, or roots to, or whatever the word is that they're working on. Once your students understand how to use the graphic organizer, you can um, have them work in groups or pairs to, to make their own graphic organizer. And let them pick the word. So one of the words that they feel strongly about that you've come up with as on your list. So do we have any other descriptions of garden? Well, we're going to give you a chance to try now. Or I'm going to put you in groups. Here are the groups. Red is Central and South America. Purple is Europe. Blue is the Middle East. Green, Asia. And yellow, Africa. 
So match the location to the word in the same color and describe your word in the chat box. But please write the word that you're describing before your description so we know what you're talking about. And Delia said we do not have garden at, gardens at school. That's okay. Many of us do not have gardens at school. Um, we can certainly use different topics to uh, talk about metaphors, but I think even if we don't have a garden at school, we can probably find a garden somewhere in the area. Okay, so I see um, seeds are oval and small. Soil equals fertility. Seeds need water. Sunlight is great in my country. Seed, the, a new baby to be born. A soil platform for everything. Rain, water, those are all really great answers. Thank you for sharing. Okay, so the next step in our lesson. Ask if any of these descriptions that we've come up with so far, remind them of someone they know. For example, is full of life. Can you think of anyone that is full of life? Or can you think of anyone that provides a foundation and support? For that one, I would say my parents. So write this chart on the board or make copies for students. This chart will help students generate ideas for their metaphors. In the first column, there are some people listed. So you see students and teachers. Um, so you can, uh, the students can continue to fill in the people list with more groups of people as I have, or they can write individual people like my best friend, or they could write someone famous like Nelson Mandela. Next, students write words to describe these groups or individuals next to the person. So we have young, growing, need, nurture. So we put that next to students. Um, families got our backs. I like that one. Um, gives guidance, shaped lives, teachers. Finally, um, have students think about which garden word matches the description that they wrote. So although I think Growing and needs nurture reminds me of students. It also reminds me of seeds. One thing to do after students have filled in their chart is to have um, each student share their ideas. Hearing each other's descriptions will help spark new ideas within each student. Remember that there really can't be a wrong answer and that all answers will be different. So encourage creativity. And the last step. It's time to have the students write their own extended metaphors. Have each student choose a person. Let them know they will be writing an essay about this person. Have students brainstorm um, a word that, a garden word that reminds them of this person and write out the characteristics of the person and of the garden word. So they can use the ideas from the graphic art organizer and the chart to help them. Examples could be, my best friend is a tulip. She adds color and happiness to my life. Or my parents are the rain. They sometimes prevent me from doing fun things. Once students have written their first draft, you could then do a peer review session and let students read each other's papers and make comments. One thing to think about before doing peer review is to make sure that students are familiar with the task and that you've set guidelines and you encourage positive comments. Finally, have students create their final draft and post around the room. To make this more colorful, have um, the students create a collage around their paper with either magazine cutouts or drawings or even photographs maybe of the person they've described or the garden word. So this is just one example of a classroom activity. We will be posting links to all of the activities on the name and we'd like you to share how they work in your classroom. We know that you will adapt these and use these differently, and we'd love to hear from you and how you use them. So now we're going to move on to the lighter side of TEFL. And I want to know if you know what the lighter side is. So you can choose more than one answer on this poll. So some people think it's a word game in the back of each issue of forum. A few people think it's a fun activity that teachers can use in their classrooms with students. A few people think it's a compilation of puzzles from forum that can be found online. And a fun activity for teachers to do when they receive a copy of forum. 
And a couple people think it's a lightweight English textbook. Wouldn't that be nice? Textbooks are always too heavy. Okay, so well, let's we're going to discover the answers to this poll as we talk more about the lighter side. So as I mentioned, in every issue of Forum, we also have the lighter side on the last page of each issue. And some of you said this earlier when Max was asking. Each puzzle is related to the theme. This puzzle is from our fishing issue. They are tongue twisters with the missing first letter. Once you figure out the missing letter, say them five times fast. Tongue twisters can be really fun and funny to do with students. So I'm going to try the first one. She saw seven swimming shrimp. She saw seven swimming shrimp. She saw seven swimming shrimp. Whew, it gets pretty tricky. Um, and these are all made up. They're not famous, and they're really easy to make up. You can just think of a sentence or write a sentence um, that has each word starting with the same letter, and that's how you make a tongue twister. Anyway, you can find the lighter side online all the way back to 1993 by looking at each issue online of Forum. The lighter side puzzle is usually found at the bottom of the page on the website. But if it's just the lighter side you're looking for, there's an easier way to access all of the past puzzles. There is a book that contains all of these puzzles that is also online. So if you go to our website, englishprograms.state.gov, you will find all of our downloadable publications. These are free and available to you at any time. And here is where you will find the lighter side of TEFL. So let's take a closer look. This book contains the puzzles from 1976 all the way to 2010. They are divided into categories to make it easier for you to navigate. There's word games, crossword puzzles, idioms, limericks, jokes and riddles, puzzles, stories, wisdom, folk wisdom, and the answer key, of course, which is always important because sometimes we can't even figure out the answers. They can be pretty tricky. So there are many ways to use the lighter side in your classrooms. As some of you said that you teachers like to do them when you receive your issue of form, and of course that's great. We love teachers to have fun, but we can use them in the classroom as well. A fun way to begin each class is well with something fun. Get students excited about English class by starting the day with a puzzle or joke. Uh, you can also find lighter side puzzles related to a new topic that you are starting in class. Or a, or a topic that you want to review. And you can use it as a reward or hold competitions in class. And I will show you how. Here's a way to start each class. Post a word game on the board, and as students are walking in, they can try to figure it out. You could even post some of those tongue twisters that we saw earlier. Does anyone know the answers to or what these phrases represent? I see eggs. I'm not sure it's just eggs. I think there's something else. Red cross. Good. Um, I think it might be a oh, scrambled egg. There you go. Mind over matter. Good. So see, you can get your students' minds activated when they're walking into the room just by having these puzzles on the board. Another way to use the lighter side is, again, to inter introduce or review a topic. Here are some idioms about food. Maybe your topic is food and you're working with an intermediate or higher class. Um, sometimes it can be helpful to teach idioms that are related to one topic. So here in the lighter side, you'll just see the idiom and the definition. But I'm going to show you a way to adapt this to make a classroom activity. Write the idioms and the definitions on cards. Give each student one card. Have the students with the idioms cards stand in one line facing the line of students holding the definition. Have the idioms walk to the person across from them. Have them discuss whether they think they are a match. If they are not a match, they should go back to their line and rotate. Again, have the idiom line walk to the person across from them, and it should be a new person. If the idiom and definition match, they should stay together. If they don't match, have them rotate again. So continue like this until all the matches have been found. 
And finally, using the lighter side as rewards. Jokes and riddles can make really fun rewards. Have some with you in class at all times and when, use them when students are being especially good. Maybe, for example, everyone turned in their homework that day, so you spend the last few minutes of class telling jokes or riddles. You can write them on the board and have students work in pairs to come up with the answers. You can even have maybe one student come up and ask the joke to the class, or let students know ahead of time to prepare some jokes and riddles to share. Does anyone know the answers to these? You can share them in the chat box. And I'm going to just share another joke with you that I think is pretty funny for teachers. What three words do students use most, says the teacher. The student says, I don't know. And the teacher says, that's correct. <laughs> so pretty funny. All right, and here are the answers to the other riddles. So you can see that the body parts that start with three letters are here, and the clothing articles that are worn on the feet that start with the letter S. And finally, competition. So the Shaggy Dog stories, which are stories that are just, they're funny stories with the dog as a main character and he acts as a human. Um, they're already set up for us to use. They are set up so that we can cut them into strips. So here's a way we can do it as a competition. Have multiple strip stories cut up and at the front of the room. Put students into teams. Have one student from a, each team run to the front of the room and take one of the stories. Then have the student run back to their team and the students put the story in order as quickly as they can. Then another student runs to the front of the room with the story in order and the teacher checks it. The first team to put the story in order gets a point. But then you can rotate all of these stories and play again because each group is working on a different story. So these are just some examples of ways that you can use the lighter side in the classroom. But I'm sure that there's millions, millions more of more ideas that you can come up with. So again, please share your ideas on the name. We've talked a lot about how you can use Forum in the classroom. But now we want to talk about how you can contribute to Forum. We have our assistant editor of English Teaching Forum, Tom Glass, here to give you some tips on how to submit articles. Because remember, English Teaching Forum is written by teachers for teachers, and that means you. So, welcome, Tom. Thank you, Jenny. Hi, everybody. As Jenny told you, my name is Tom. It's nice to be here. I'll be with you for the next few minutes. Uh, you've just heard Jenny talk about classroom activities and the lighter side. They're, they are in the back of every issue of Forum. Now at the front of every issue are articles that are written by English teachers from around the world. So let's talk about submitting an article to Forum. I'll start with a question for you. And the question is, why should English teachers submit an article to Forum? Can you think of any reasons? I'll give you a moment or two to answer. Okay, I'm seeing to share some experiences, to share ideas, to share good practices. Ah, an initiative for professional development, share activities, uh, share personal experiences. Oh, wow, very good, very good. Uh, develop their experience to share activities that work, okay? Update themselves. Um, give modern methods. Okay, these are all excellent, excellent reasons why teacher, English teachers should submit articles to forum, encourage discussion. Okay, uh, there are many, many good reasons. Um, right now, here are three reasons that we would like to share with you. Uh, the first reason is to share ideas with other teachers. Yes, this is one that many of you have mentioned. Now, all of you love to get new teaching ideas, right? Okay, well, when you publish an article in Forum, you share your ideas with thousands of teachers all over the world. You help them, 
and you help their students. I think that's something that people sometimes forget. You not only help other teachers, but you help those teachers' students. Okay, another reason for English teachers to submit articles to forum is to further their professional development. I think a few of you mentioned that in the uh, chat box. Um, when you publish an article in forum or in any journal, that's a real accomplishment. It's a way for teachers to make use of their knowledge and to further their careers. And the third reason that I'm going to share with you here is to help with the professional development of others. By sharing your ideas, you give other teachers more knowledge. You give them more tools that they can use in their own careers. So publishing an article is a way for one teacher, the author, to support many other teachers. All right, uh, we've seen some very good reasons uh, that you've come up with for submitting an article to Forum. So let's move on to talk a little bit more about actually um, submitting. I want to give you a little quiz. All right, I have a um, true or false quiz for you. Are you ready? The first question, true or false? If you want to submit an article to Forum, the article should provide practical ideas for English teachers. Is that statement true? Or false? What do you think? Okay, we're getting a lot of true and we're getting one yes. Okay, Mega says it depends on the kind of publication. Well, we're talking about English teaching forum here. Okay, the answer is true. Yes, forum articles describe ideas that teachers can put into practice, things that teachers can do. That should be the focus of articles that are written for forum, describing things that teachers can do. Okay, number two, true or false? If you want to submit an article to forum, the teaching ideas should be your own. True or false? By the way, Edison, it, theory could be part of the article, but the main focus of the article should be on the practice of teaching. This time we're getting a mixture. Some people are saying true, some people are saying false, some people are saying true and false. Okay, the answer, the answer is true. Remember, we're talking about the teaching ideas that you're describing. You should write about your own teaching ideas, a technique, a project, something you've developed for your teaching. It's very common for teachers to share ideas with one another, and that's fine. But when you write an article to be published, the focus of the article should be on teaching ideas that you have created and developed. Maybe you've collaborated with other teachers on a project, and that's fine, too. You can write an article together. But the teaching ideas should be original, and they should be yours. If, if you base your idea on someone else's idea, you have to give that person credit, and you have to show very clearly why your ideas are different from that person's. OK, I have one more true-false statement for you. Number three, if you want to submit an article to forum, true or false, the article should be relevant to teachers around the world. Okay, we're getting mostly true, mostly true. And for number three, the answer is true. Remember. Remember, teachers in more than 130 countries read Forum. So each article should include information that teachers in different countries can use, not just teachers in your country and not just teachers with students who speak a specific language. The articles in Forum should be more universal, more universal, so that teachers everywhere can benefit from them. OK, so all three answers were true. How did you do? Did you get all of them correct?
Okay, many of you did. Well, congratulations. Okay, you're doing so well that I'm going to ask you another question. The next question is, what advice would you give to someone who is writing an article for Forum? Any ideas? I'll give you a, a moment or two to think about this. What advice, what tips would you give to someone who is writing an article for Forum? Okay, be practical. Right, based on your experience, be clear, be direct, modern ideas, okay, creative, uh, use editing and refining, be realistic, okay, take a problem in your school and develop ideas to solve the problem, okay, feasible, innovative, precise, think of different settings of teachers around the world. Okay, Elizabeth says, follow the, tip, the tips just given. Okay, that's, that's very good. Okay, again, all of you are coming up with very good suggestions here. Uh, I'm going to uh, give you a few recommendations. Um, and the first one, the first piece of advice is read Forum to learn its content and style. Before you submit your work to any journal or magazine, you should be familiar with the kinds of articles that journal publishes. It's a way to make sure your topic is appropriate. And reading forum might just give you some extra ideas, too. Okay, so become familiar with the journal that you, that you plan to submit an article to. Okay, the second piece of advice we're going to give you today is write about a successful teaching practice okay remember this is if you're writing an article for forum okay forum publishes articles about how to teach or what teachers can do so base your article on a practice a technique a project something that you have used and that has worked well with your students third piece of, of advice be concrete, use examples. I think some of you mentioned this earlier in the chat box when I asked what advice you would give. Concrete writing is almost always more effective than abstract writing. For example, suppose you are writing about role plays and you say something general like, it's good to use role plays. Well, that might be true, but it doesn't really help other teachers. It's much better to describe role plays in detail such as what language skills role plays can develop, different ways to use the role plays in the classroom, suggestions for role play situations, ideas for variation, and so on. The important thing is you should give teachers a complete description so that they can read your article and then be ready to use your ideas in their classrooms. All right, fourth piece of advice for today. See what you think about this one. Ask a colleague to review your article before you submit it. What do you think about that? Okay, maybe not just one colleague, maybe more than one. Maybe one of your own teachers, someone, someone you know who's a good writer. Um, get feedback, especially from someone who is familiar with Forum, and ask them a question like this. Does this article give you clear ideas that you can use in your own English teaching? As most of you know, getting honest feedback is a great way to make your article stronger. And you should always be willing to rewrite your article to make it stronger as well. All right, one more piece of advice. When your article is ready, submit it as an email attachment to etforum at state.gov. That is forum's email address. And you should know that there is no deadline. You can send your article whenever it's ready. Now, what happens to your article after you submit it? Any ideas? You've written an article. You have had it reviewed by a few colleagues. You've rewritten it. Now it's ready to submit. What happens to your article then? Okay. <laughs> Bessie 5 says, we wait. 
Um, not necessarily published, will be checked, read by the committee. Okay, here's what happens to your article. First, Forum's Editorial Review Board reviews the article. And you should know, this is a blind review. That means that reviewers do not know who the author is. By the way, Maria, you say, could we write an article in a group, more than one author? The answer is yes, you can. Now, when the review board reviews the article, they will do one of the following things. Maybe they will accept the article. That means the article will be published. Or the review board might ask you to revise the article. And they will give you suggestions for how to revise it. Or a third thing the review board might do is reject the article. If that happens, they will give you a reason. Now you should keep in mind that many authors have one article rejected, but they use that as a learning process, and later they have another article accepted. Magda, you said, can we submit again? The answer is yes. You can. All right. One more question, but it's an important one. Where can you find more information about submitting an article to Forum? Okay, Forum Magazine, in the Forum website, in the net, online. In the website, yes, very good. Uh, actually, many places that you can find information, but I think the best place might be here, forum.state.gov. Yes, the website. That's the same website that Heather showed you earlier in the webinar. Uh, feel free to visit at any time. And before I go, I would like to say we hope that we will see some articles from some of you very soon. Okay, thanks very much for your time. Now, we want to make sure you've all been paying attention to us today. So, we have a little quiz for you, and here is Jenny again. All right, is everybody ready to take a quiz? I hope you've been listening. There are four questions here that I'd like you to answer. We have a lot of enthusiastic quiz takers here. All right, forum is written by English teachers, for English teachers. Question number two. You must have a subscription to access forum. Question number three. You can create or adapt instructional materials using the feature article, classroom activities, and the lighter side. And question number four. Only published authors can submit articles to forum. All right, so number one is true. We've seen at the beginning of the webinar that the form is written by English teachers for English teachers from over 139 countries. And English teachers means you, so you are also welcome to submit an article. Question number two, you must have a subscription to access forum. So, wow, we were kind of on the fence on this one, but the answer is actually false. As Heather showed us, the forum is on line at forum.state.gov. Question number three. You can create or adapt instructional materials using the feature article, classroom activities, and the lighter side. So this is true. We saw many ways that we can use um, all of these things in forum to use in our classroom. And the last question. Only published authors can submit articles to forum. False. So as Tom just um, told us, there are many ways that he has helped you be able to submit articles to Forum. So we hope that you will do so. All right. So we thank you for your participation today. Before we leave, we're going to tell you about our upcoming webinar series. And then we will take attendance. So thanks again and see you soon. OK, well, I want to thank Jenny and Tom and Max and Heather um, for really a thought-provoking 
presentation and part of the celebration for our Forum at 50 events that are going to be taking place all year. Uh, I promised you earlier that uh, this was the 